Hello, my name is Alex Merced, Developer Advocate here at Dremio, and I want to just do a quick walkthrough of the UI of a Dremio Sonar project. So again, Dremio Sonar is the query engine, but it offers so much more. So basically, right as I logged in, I, I am in the SQL editor. So essentially, this is where I can write SQL statements, and I'm going to be able to see all my connected data sets right over here, and you know easily be able to just kind of add them over. So if, let's say I want to connect to this particular data set here, and when I see taxi trips, I can just drag it right over and plop. See, it's going to add it right there. So it makes it really easy to kind of grab my data sets, add them to my query as I build out my query. Um, I'm going to have tools here to do like add columns, group buys, joins. Um, I have like a big, nice directory of SQL functions that I can use over here. Okay, I can turn on light mode and dark mode here. Okay, um, I can turn on and off autocomplete. And then I have some keyboard shortcuts that I can use here. At any time, I can save any SQL query that I want, either as a script or as a view. So a view would be treated more like a data set that people can access. A script would be more like I want to save a query that I plan on like as a template and I want to edit it. So then I can just like load it up, edit it for my particular use case. Um, so I can kind of do that there. I can see all my scripts over here. So that way if I have any scripts I want to load, I can just load them up there. So it becomes pretty, pretty useful. Now, if I want to take a look at all my data sets, I can go right over here to data sets. Okay, I'll leave the SQL editor and I can see all my sources here. So basically we're going to have our different storages or different uh, sources. Anytime I want to add a source, I'll just click here on add source and I can add an Arctic project, which we'll, we'll do in a later video. Uh, I can add AWS Glue, Amazon S3, uh, several different databases, and the list is going to continue to grow of the sources I can connect on Dremio Cloud. Okay. But essentially, I can keep expanding all my different sources over here. Okay. Now, once I have a source, what's going to happen is I can take a source, pick Explore it. So right here, I have this like sample data source that your project you'll initially start with, uh, which is some sample data to work with. And I can say right here in samples, let's say this NYC taxi trips data here. Okay. And this is like actually a sample iceberg table. Um, what I can do is actually let's see here. We here we have the actually the taxi trips folder. So here you see it's like an iceberg table that's already there. Um, this is the same data as a bunch of parquet files. So let's say I did have the data as a bunch of parquet files in a folder. What I can do is I can promote the folder. So I'll just click over here and I would promote the folder. And I'd be able to like turn it into a data set. Okay. So when I do that, I'll just say, hey, I wanted to save it as it's parquet. I'll hit save. And what it's going to do, it's going to initially save this data set um, into my home space. Your home space is generally going to be like the default landing page for any time you add sort of data to your account. Okay. And then what we're going to be able to do is create spaces, which will be like sub sections where you can then create different variations on those views. Okay. So that I'll, I'll take a moment because basically what's going to happen, what's happening here is that when you first start up your account, you're started with a, just a space. A small an extra small engine okay so it's a small engine you can we'll show you in a second like where you can change your engine so if you need an engine that's a little bit uh, faster and or set all those kind of settings but basically here I have now loaded this so now if I go back to my data sets and see if I take a look at my uh, spaces I can see like now I have this data set loaded so you see now it's a data set so purple is always a physical data set so it's the actual raw data Okay, and then again, I can take those data sets and then save them into these spaces. So I could take different approaches. You know, I can sit there and like, if I wanted to do like a more data mesh type approach, I can create spaces for like each of my departments and say like, okay, here we have a marketing space and I can say which users have access, what type of access do they have? Okay, not just users, but I can also enter roles. Um, and then again, assign users different roles and things like that. But I'll create like, let's say a marketing department section. And then I'll add access to that to users from the marketing department and they'll be able to add data, you know, basically create a, mar a data product from that. And again, maybe inside the marketing department's space, we create some additional folders. Okay, so I'll create like a new folder and we might, you know, do like a bronze, silver, gold thing. So they'll land their raw data in bronze. Okay, then they'll like do their joins and things like that in a silver. And then put all sort of their their um, what basically consumers should be like uh, querying in a gold holder, okay? 
and basically just kind of work through it that way. So that way, when a consumer logs in and they're look, taking a look at the marketing product, they know, okay, hey, the stuff I really want to query is in the gold folder. But the data engineers know, okay, hey, I might need to go do some stuff with the raw data. I head into the bronze folder. I may need to clean up some of the joins. I'll head into the silver folder. That could also be done as like um, raw uh, business application. But the bottom line is you can kind of set up this sort of semantic layer. And then again, in any of these data sets, they're going to also have the feature of a wiki. Okay, so literally like here in, at the folder level, I can go click here and like edit wiki content and just put a description saying like, this is the marketing data product and put some details on there that describes like all the different data sets and things like that. Um, so that way you can create a nice, well-documented semantic layer that's gonna make it easy for anyone to access your data. And again, that data, that's distributed within these spaces, the semantic layer can be coming from any of your sources. So it doesn't matter if it's S3, if it's AWS Glue, et cetera, you're gonna have all that pretty easily visible there. And then we're gonna have our job section. Here we can take a look at different jobs. Um, so we can like see like how long they took, where who's who's running them, all sorts of data. So I can click on a job. And it's gonna load up all this information so that way I can kind of see like, okay, where is the time coming from? So like, okay, so like a job took this long and it took this long in planning, this long in execution, and so forth. And then, you know, basically we can download a profile of your query in order to do even more fine-tune uh, uh, troubleshooting. Okay, and I have a lot of other details here, so I can take a look at the raw profile, which is really going to show me that query broken down in a very, very granular way. So you can really kind of see where specifically there might be bottlenecks in your queries. Um, basically see a profile of that query, kind of see like Again, just like the phases, the steps that it's going through as it runs the query. Again, it's just going to allow you to kind of have deeper insight into how your queries are being run. Okay, then here we have like the settings section for the project. So this is where you can change your project settings. Most importantly here is the engine section. So you can see here, when you have a fresh Dremio Sonar project, you have a 2XS uh, engine, okay, which is two times extra small. So it's going to be like generally like the smallest engine you can have, um, which is going to be also the cheapest um as far as like the instances in, in your cloud account now you can change that so i can click here on edit and i can choose you know what size do i want so i can create you know some heavy duty engines if i run really really if i need super fast i can change concurrency so that way i can handle multiple queries at the same time so we can set like okay how many concurrent things can be going on at the same time okay have uh the situation of like replicas like how many replicas of that cluster do you want to allow okay and you know like let's say you never want the engines to turn off you just want them to stay on just you can just say hey minimum replicas of one and then whatever your max replica is and always make sure at least the one replica is is on okay but you know i would like it to eventually turn off so i will say zero and then again in the advanced configuration i can set things like okay how soon does it like auto turn off so in this case um that is like um so many seconds Okay, so that's like, um, let's see here, like half an hour. Okay, so basically at half an hour, if I don't run any queries, this cluster will shut down, and then it will spin back up when I run another query. So this way it controls your costs. Okay, so then there's a lot of other settings you can use so that way you can control your queries. And you can create multiple settings. So you can actually have your 2XS preview engine, great for like just, you know, basic small jobs, and then add more heavy duty engines and then you can actually set the routing. So that way, like, let's say maybe the marketing department, they're not gonna need as much power. So you can actually set rules to query, say, okay, when these users or these types of jobs run a query, send them to this engine, okay? Versus these types of jobs, send them to this engine. So that way you can make sure that you're providing your, your higher cost computing power to the jobs that need it and spend less on the jobs where you don't wanna spend uh, as much on. So you get really kind of, solid control there okay and then there's data reflections so you can if you have any data reflections uh on you'd be able to see them here okay so essentially as you create data sets what you'll be able to do is let's say if i go back to my new york taxi data set if i go back to here and let's say i wanted to accelerate this generally you're going to want to accelerate more like your sub views so basically i might create you know a view of this data that looks at a subset of the data and I want to accelerate that sub view, what I would do is I would head over here to reflections and I can turn on like a raw reflection, which will like create a, essentially an auto refreshed uh, materialization of that data. 
Um, or if I need to really speed up like aggregation queries, I can turn on aggregation reflections and choose which kind of dimensions and measures I want to optimize for. And it'll create the appropriate materialization so that way when I run those types of queries, they're going to be a lot faster, sometimes sub-second. Okay, so you have all that feature set there. So that's essentially a tour of the uh, Dremio Sonar uh, UI. Again, there's a lot of other cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, a lot of it has to do with like the SQL you can write. So if you are, have an Arctic catalog or a glue ca AWS glue catalog or an S3 catalog, you can use Iceberg DML to create iceberg tables, to update iceberg tables, delete iceberg da data from those tables. Um, you'll also be able to set like row and column rules. So that way saying, okay, hey, only these users, when this is true, can access this column or this row. You can define your own uh, basically user-defined functions. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do here when it comes to querying your data lake. But one of the benefits here is that you create this semantic layer again that just gives sort of a uniform playbook for what data do we have, how is it organized, um, regardless of where that data lives. So I'll see you later on. We'll talk more about setting up for Dremio Arctic. I'll see you all in a moment.